Hi, welcome back to Dr. O'Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be covering age-related macular degeneration, also known as ARMD. In this video, we're going to be covering a definition, causes, classification, signs and symptoms, treatment options for ARMD, and finally, complications. So let's start off with a definition. Well, age-related macular degeneration, also known as AMD, is the term that applies to changes without any other obvious precipitating cause which occur in the central area of the retina, also known as the macula, in people aged 50 years and over. In terms of causes, well, the causes of AMD are unknown, but we do know about certain risk factors that make you more likely to develop this. So these include things like smoking, a family history of AMD, as well as genetic factors, and obviously age. So if you're aged over 50 years old, you're more likely to go on and develop AMD. So let's go on and look at the different types of AMD. And broadly, there's essentially two different types. The first is dry and the second is wet. So the dry, also known as atrophic type, is the most common type and it typically affects between 80 to 90% of people who have AMD. The dry AMD tends to progress more slowly than the wet type and there's not as of yet an approved treatment or cure for it. In dry age-related macular degeneration, small white or yellow deposits called drusen form on the retina, and you can see a picture of the drusen here. These form beneath the macula and it causes it to degenerate over time. Drusen are the hallmark of dry AMD. So if you see an exam question that mentions the person has drusen, think AMD. So these small yellow deposits that are beneath the retina are a buildup of waste materials, and they're essentially made up of cholesterol, protein, and fats. Typically, when the drusen first form, they don't cause any vision loss. However, they are a risk factor for progressing to vision loss. When a person has got more advanced dry macular degeneration, then there are many more of these small yellowish deposits and they're typically larger. The other type of AMD that you should know about is wet or neovascular AMD, and that affects typically 10 to 15% of individuals with AMD. So although it's less common, it accounts for approximately 90% of all causes of severe vision loss from the disease. Wet AMD or neovascular AMD tends to progress much more rapidly and causes severe loss of central vision. In this form, the degeneration of the macula causes the retina to create a protein called vascular endothelial growth factor, also known as VEGF. This is made by the retina in order to protect itself and create new blood vessels. However, this attempt is futile as those new blood vessels are abnormal. In wet AMD, these abnormal blood vessels tend to break and bleed very easily, and they leak fluid, which causes damage to the macula. After some time, a scar can overlie the entire macula, causing severe loss of central vision. So let's go on and talk about the symptoms of AMD and the kind of things that someone might present to you with in clinic that may make you think, okay, I think this person might have AMD, what do I need to do? Well, the first symptom that they may present with is distortion of vision where straight lines appear crooked or wavy, such as seen in this photo. You could also get painless loss or blurring of central or near central vision. You can also get a black or grey patch which affects the central field of vision and this is known as a scotoma. You can get difficulty reading, driving or seeing fine details such as facial features. Patients may also complain of flickering or flashing lights and difficulty adjusting from bright to dim lighting. Visual hallucinations are typically associated with severe visual loss, however, they can occur with AMD. So what investigations do you need to do? Well, if you suspect AMD, a thorough fundoscopy and eye exam should be performed. In the community, in non-specialist settings, patients are typically identified clinically with good history taking, visual fields exams and fundoscopy. Something else that may be useful to do is Amsler grid testing, and that's useful in picking up altered central vision. Imaging in the specialist center, however, is the gold standard for investigation, and that imaging is typically an OCT scan, which involves high resolution imaging of the retina, and that can be used to assess the thickness of the retinal layers and the presence of retinal fluid. There are other types of imaging available, and I've included links in the description box of this video where you can go away and do a little bit more reading, but essentially this video is to give you a flavor of what is involved as a non-specialist. So let's move on now and talk about 
treatment. So if AMD is suspected, then urgent referral to an ophthalmologist should be arranged within one to two weeks. The exact treatment that you're going to get will depend on the type of AMD there is. Remember, there's two types, dry and wet. The wet one is typically the more aggressive. So for dry AMD, there's no treatment, but vision aids can help to reduce the effect on someone's life. In terms of wet AMD, well, the specialist may decide that the person will need regular eye injections and very occasionally a light treatment called photodynamic therapy. And that's essentially in order to stop the vision from getting worse. I've included more links in the description box of this video about treatment because I think if you're a non-specialist, it's important to have a general knowledge about broadly what's available rather than knowing the specific details about management options because often these are going to be decided by our ophthalmologists colleagues. So finally, what are the complications of AMD? Well, complications of AMD include visual impairment and blindness. They can also include visual hallucinations, which we talked about earlier in this video. People can get depression, falls and fractures, and reduced quality of life. So remember, if you suspect someone has AMD, make sure you're asking them about impact of this on their quality of life, things such as driving, how their mood has been, etc. I hope you found the video useful and informative. We've covered a whole host of things there on AMD, and I hope now you have a slightly better understanding of this important condition. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, where I release new medical education content videos every Wednesday and every Sunday. If you've got any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments box below. I'll be sure to get back to you. Please remember to check out all of the links in the description box, and until next time, thanks for watching and bye.